Hello, my name is Ian McCall and this is the first in a series of video webinars describing the Dermoscopy Made Simple uh, website. Many of the ideas in this teaching blog uh, have come from the work of Harold Kittler, Scott Menzies, Cliff Rosendahl and Alan Cameron. And the Blink algorithm, which uh, we'll talk about later, is the work of Dr. Peter Bourne. What we'll be doing in these webinars is giving you just a short five to seven minute uh, video on the topic under discussion. The various topics are down the right side of the blog, but let's start with Dermoscopy Made Simple. With a dermatoscope, you're able to look at the upper two millimeters of skin, and this is using mainly polarized light, although some dermatoscopes have non-polarized light. You see structures and colors, and these structures and colors are determined by the anatomy of the dermoepidermal junction of the skin, the blood vessels, the keratin that is uh, on the skin surface, and some collagen in the dermis of the skin. It's the colors that you see when light reflects off these that uh, determines the colors of a lesion. Now all the structures that you're going to see can be described using terminology originally put out by Harold Kittler. And Harold described these structures basically as lines, circles, clods, dots, and structureless. And he also used the term pseudopods, which we'll define later. And similar uh, terms can be applied to vessels. So you can have vessels as lines um, and vessels that uh, are clod-like or circular. Now all of these will be described later in this presentation. Now at this stage, if you're just learning uh, dermatoscopy, you probably just want to know which pigmented lesions you should look at and which ones should be removed to exclude a melanoma. So uh, let's keep uh, things simple then. The ones that you should look at if you look at a patient are the ones that look different or the ones that are out of place in comparison to the others around about them. But if you look at a lesion and it's just one color and one pattern of structures, then it's benign. And just go on to the next lesion. So one color and one pattern as far as structures go, then it's benign. Now, the corollary, if, if there's more than one color or it shows several structures, then it can be described as chaotic and therefore suspicious. You then look to see if it has any of the clues for melanoma. And if you see any of these, you cut the lesion out. Now note, I said cut it out, not partially biopsy it. The pathologist needs the whole specimen to examine it properly. So let's look back at uh, Dermoscopy Made Simple. This slide shows you how lines reticular form. Now lines reticular is the net-like structure that you see when you look at most benign nevi. As you can see here, you've got holes and then you've got the darker area of the net. Now the holes correspond just to this thin layer of melanocytes or melanin just over the tops of the dermal papillae, whereas the lines have that much thicker layer of melanocytes or melanin along the sides of the reti ridges. So in areas where you've got prominent reti ridges, you're going to have a nice uh, reticular net-like pattern. So as we say here at the sides of the reti ridges, the dermatoscope, which, which is looking down vertically, sees a column of pigmented cells which shows up as the dark areas of the net. So that's the origin of uh, lines reticular, the origin of the net-like pattern that you see through the dermatoscope, looking at any benign nevi. So, let's look at some examples. There's a benign lesion, one pattern, lines reticular, one color, brown. Okay, go on to the next lesion. These are just the opening of hair follicles where there's a little hole in the, in the pattern. Similarly, look at this one. Again, benign, one pattern, lines reticular, and one color. Move on to the next lesion. You can scan someone's back very, very quickly if you're simply looking at these features. 
Now look at this one. This one's different. More than one pattern and more than one color. You've got brown, you've got black, you've got blue. So you've got thickened lines reticular, which is this area down here. You've got disrupted, some structureless area in there. And you've got these things called blue, I've said blue globules, but Harold likes to call them blue clods. And blue clods are generally seen either in BCCs or in melanoma, but you don't get lines reticular in BCCs. So this is an invasive melanoma. More than one color, more than one pattern. So what are the clues to melanoma when you're looking at something? Well, these are the clues that uh, are generally recognized. Some people have more, some have less. First of all, thick lines reticular or branched, especially peripherally. So you've got, as you saw in that last one, thick lines reticular at the periphery. Then it's suggestive that uh, this may be a melanoma. Lines parallel on ridges. We'll come to this later when you look at the section on lines. Lines radial or pseudopod segmental, just pseudopods at the outside of a, uh, of a lesion. Blue or gray structures, gray dots, black dots uh, or clods peripheral. Eccentric structureless areas, a clear or pink structureless area at the outside of a lesion. White lines. We'll go into what these are later, but they're bits of collagen normally, deeper in the dermis. Polymorphous vessels, especially with dot vessels. And you'll see that, uh, what I mean by these, when you come to the vessel section. And if a lesion has varying shades of pink within it, then that may be the only presentation of a uh, hypomelanotic or an amelanotic melanoma. We'll show you examples of all of these clues later. But let's look back again. These are the various features that you'll see when you look at uh, lesions with a dermatoscope. These are just some of the simple features. You can see here that we've got a whole list of uh, topics that you can in fact click on and uh, see much the, the topic in much more detail. And there'll be a small uh, webinar on each of those. So get clicking, look and see the thing that you'd enjoy next. What I'd suggest you do is you go to Kitlerian Terminology and click on that and we'll discuss these various uh, terms that Harold uses uh, in some detail. Thank you very much.